Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, here's a playlist of our entire second season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here, and we're gonna be chatting about something large format. Today we're back at 400 West Rich. Uh, I had a couple of questions last week with the contact printing episode and even a few email challenges uh, from some viewers of the show and I thought, you know what, this could be worth a try. So here's the challenge. What if I don't have a darkroom space? I don't have a fancy light source or larger, maybe even timers. What do I do? Let's check it out. So here we are, we're in the darkroom at 400 West Rich, and it's looking a little bit stripped down. The reason is the challenge today involves not using an enlarger, not using any fancy enlarging timers, calibrated light sources. We are gonna go as bare bones as possible to show you that while it's nice to have a darkroom space, you don't necessarily need to have all of the gear to make it happen. Today we're gonna to make contact prints kind of like we did with last week's episode, except we're only gonna use our negatives, our printing paper, a shop lamp, like a $5 shop lamp. I think this one was a used one when I got it, and our contact printing frame. If you don't have a contact printing frame, you can literally just use a piece of glass. I mean, this is glass and foam, essentially. Uh, it's taped over from last week, so I'm gonna use this one, but we can just use a plate of glass as well. So, same as the normal contact printing process, but we're going bare bones. Light, glass, negative, paper, that's it. So before we start printing, we're gonna have to set up our trays just like we did last week. We're exposing over this way, we're gonna process here in our wet zone, and we're gonna flow right out the door for drying. So we're gonna go right from our exposure to our developer, our stop bath, fix, and a rinse. Let's get mixing. So some notes about the light we're using today. This is just a cheap shop reflector. I removed the reflector piece because I have this teeny tiny little bulb here, which is a uh, Kodak Junior 7 watt bulb. These can be kind of tricky to find, but even if you have something really weak like a 7, uh, I think they make a 15 watt bulb, Try not to go over 20 if possible. If you don't have access to one of these, your smartphone with a white screen and your variable brightness can also get you there. Uh, but having a more point source really helps. So I'm just gonna suspend this above my print frame. Isn't it adorable? So when we're doing this type of printing, when we're working with our little bear bulb up here, I'm gonna flip that on so we can see a little bit better. Uh, it helps to have a negative that has a lot of density to it. You want negatives that are pretty thick. I've got one that prints uh, really close to a grade zero and another one that prints close to a grade two. So one has more density, more highlight values. They're all starting to kind of block up in there. And that's gonna require more exposure time from my light source. Uh, than my negative that prints at a higher contrast grade. Remember, our grades go from zero to five. All right, let's, uh, let's start with this really high contrast negative. This is another one from my Ohio Uninterrupted series, and I'm just gonna get one of my off cuts from trimming my paper last week. I got my paper safe right underneath. So I've got my paper, shiny side up. Fiber paper is a dead giveaway because it always curls toward the shiny side. And then I'm gonna place the negative emulsion side down along there and even though i have a strip of paper i'm not really going to run it much like a test strip because uh, i'm not going to have as much time to like move across i'm just going to count some out and we'll head to the developer all right i'm going to start with a pretty modest six second exposure ready and thousand one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five one thousand six Let's see what this looks like.
definitely could be a bit more exposure needed. I'm gonna take my full sheet out. We're gonna do 10 seconds underneath the lamp. See what we got. All right. So this is with 20 seconds. I really feel like it's about what we're gonna be able to get out of our limited light source. So remember, we can't Using our bare ball, we can't do too much about the contrast if we wanted to change the grade of that. We could attempt dodging and burning, um, but I don't really think that's going to get us too much further. This may be the limit that we can achieve with this printing source. But as you can see, we've, we've got a print. It's pretty flat, but we've got a print. For this next negative, this one is the thinner of the two by a long shot. And knowing, you know, kind of what... I'm getting out of this tiny light source. I'm gonna go ahead and just do my 10 second exposure. So, you know, no contrast difference except what's in the negative. But there's my thinner negative, 10 seconds. Make sure the, there you go. Emulsion side is down. Let's place it in our frame. There we go. Cool, all right. 10 seconds. Oh, yes. We like to see that. That's very nice. Yeah, I can still see a difference between the edge of the film and the pitch black. So, wow, we might even be able to go 12 seconds. And yeah, 12 seconds. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, 12 seconds was the ticket. That's what we wanted. So we got that nice black edge, but we didn't really lose too much. Our shadows stayed really well controlled and our highlights, thank you PyroCat HD, that's where we like it. All right, you know what? I think we've got time. Yeah, let's do one more negative. I'm gonna do one other one that's uh, from this Ohio Uninterrupted series. Last negative. It's another one from my Ohio Uninterrupted series. This one is, it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. It's not quite as thin as the negative I just printed from, but it does have some tricky areas. It's got some areas of really, really uh, dense highlight and then some very, very delicate shadow regions. So we may actually do a burn on this one. So what I'll do is I'll do that same 12 second exposure I did for the Halls Creek, Creek Woods, the one I just did. And then I'm gonna burn in this area a little bit by holding my hand up to the bulb and try to approximate that. Yeah, we still got a ways to go to get the sky where we want it to. Wow. I'm just surprised this is printing this well. I remember scanning this and having such a difficult time with it. 
just goes to show it's not a photograph until it's printed. So the answer to the question, do we need an enlarger or a specialty timer to make contact prints? No, we just need a sheet of glass or light sensitive paper, a bulb that we can manually control, hopefully count it out, maybe use your phone to count out the seconds if you wanna get precise. And then of course, uh, a darkened space where we have some trays and chemicals, but that's all we're gonna need to get printing. So all I have to do now, wash my prints, flatten them out on the screens, just like you saw last week, and get those ready to dry. And uh, that's it, those are some prints. If you have any questions about making contact sheets, any darkroom work, or anything large format, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.